The night sky stretches outward, silent and endless. Yet what we see may be nothing more than the surface of a far deeper ocean. Each star glimmers like a beacon, yet behind them may lie horizons unimagined, entire realms hidden beyond the reach of even our most powerful telescopes. The universe appears vast, but vastness itself might be a deception, a curtain concealing something infinitely larger. Picture two mirrors facing one another, their reflections tumbling into eternity. Each image is familiar, yet each diverges, shifting slightly, unfolding possibilities just beyond recognition. Now imagine that these are not illusions, but realities. Real worlds with real histories, where matter arranges itself into galaxies, planets, perhaps even minds. For generations, humanity has asked the question, are we alone? The search for other civilizations among the stars has long defined our cosmic ambition. Yet the multiverse hypothesis dares to widen that question beyond comprehension. If infinite universes exist, then solitude may be impossible. Humanity may not be unique, not even singular, but one of countless echoes scattered across endless versions of existence. It is a thought both humbling and terrifying that our universe, once believed to be everything, may be only one note in an eternal symphony, a fleeting strand in a boundless tapestry. If the multiverse is real, then reality itself is no longer what we thought. It becomes infinite, unfinished, and profoundly strange. And within this mystery lies the haunting possibility that we are not alone, not just in existence itself. Long before telescopes traced galaxies across the sky, human imagination dared to ask what might lie beyond the visible heavens. In ancient Greece, the atomists envisioned an infinite cosmos scattered with countless worlds. To Democritus, reality was not a single creation, but an endless dance of atoms in the void, forming and dissolving universes without end. For him, Earth was not privileged, only one island in a boundless sea. Centuries later, in Renaissance Europe, the philosopher Giordano Bruno gave new voice to this dangerous idea. He proclaimed that every star was a distant sun, orbited by planets of its own. He declared the cosmos infinite, populated with innumerable worlds, each no less real than ours. Such thoughts defied the established order. For his refusal to remain silent, Bruno was condemned and burned alive in 1600. Yet his words survived, scattering like sparks into the centuries that followed. It was not until the 20th century that science itself began to reopen the question. Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity revealed that space and time were not fixed backdrops, but a pliable fabric. Under the influence of matter and energy, this fabric could bend, twist, and expand. The universe was no longer static. It was alive, dynamic, capable of change on the grandest scales. Then came Edwin Hubble's discovery in 1929. Galaxies receding, space itself stretching outward. The universe had a beginning, a story written in time. And if our cosmos could be born, might not others be born as well? Quantum mechanics deepened the mystery further. At the smallest scales, nature appeared to choose outcomes not with certainty, but with probability. An electron might exist here or there, or both at once. To some, these were only mathematical tools, but to others, they hinted at something astonishing, that reality itself might branch, each possibility unfolding in its own direction. By mid-century, Hugh Everett's Many Worlds interpretation took this notion to its boldest conclusion. Every quantum choice creates a new universe. Our cosmos would not be a solitary whole, but one of countless diverging strands. And in the 1980s, Alan Guth's theory of cosmic inflation suggested that the Big Bang may not have been unique. Space, expanding in a violent burst, could spawn endless bubble universes, each sealed off, each with its own laws of physics. What began as whispers in philosophy had become a serious scientific question. The multiverse was no longer only a dream of poets and heretics. It was written into equations, implied by discoveries, and hovering at the edge of cosmology itself. 
a mystery vast enough to unsettle the very definition of reality. In 1964, the universe revealed a secret hidden in its silence. Two radio engineers, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, were calibrating a large antenna in New Jersey, chasing down an irritating hiss of static that refused to vanish. At first, they blamed the equipment, the atmosphere, even nesting pigeons inside the horn-shaped detector. But no matter how carefully they cleaned, adjusted, or recalibrated, the signal remained, faint, persistent, and strangely uniform, arriving from every direction in the sky. What they had stumbled upon was not interference, but a whisper from creation itself. This was the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang, light stretched and cooled over nearly 14 billion years, filling all of space like a ghostly echo. It was the oldest light humanity had ever seen, a frozen record of the infant universe only 380,000 years after its birth. For their discovery, Penzias and Wilson would win the Nobel Prize and cosmology would be transformed. The Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, became a cosmic map. Its faint ripples and temperature variations recorded the first seeds of galaxies, the blueprint of all cosmic structure. Satellites like COBE in 1989, WMAP in 2001, and Planck in 2009 refined the view, painting an increasingly precise portrait of the early universe. To look at the CMB was to look at the universe's childhood, its first breath after the fire of creation. Yet within this ancient light, something strange appeared. Amid the expected pattern of fluctuations, there emerged anomalies, regions colder than theory predicted, asymmetries that seemed to defy cosmic balance. One in particular became infamous, the cold spot, a vast region in the southern hemisphere of the sky, hundreds of millions of light years across, colder and emptier than it should be. Some argued it was a statistical fluke, a random irregularity in the data. Others proposed a cosmic void, a vast stretch of underdense space draining energy from passing photons, but a more daring suggestion emerged. What if this cold spot was the scar of a collision, our universe brushing against another? The idea was unsettling. If two bubble universes born from inflation had once touched, the fabric of space-time itself might bear the bruise. The cold spot, then, could be a fingerprint of the multiverse, imprinted on the oldest light of all. Though no consensus has been reached, the possibility remains alive. Each new satellite image, each refinement of data, is scrutinized for patterns that should not exist. And with every pixel of the CMB, the question lingers. Are we seeing the singular birth of one universe or the faint evidence of many? In the silent afterglow of the Big Bang, whispers remain. Whispers that may not belong to our universe alone. The idea of a multiverse is not merely an extension of science, it is a rupture. For centuries, humanity endured a series of humblings. Earth was not the center of creation, but one planet among many. The sun was not unique, but one star adrift in a galaxy of billions. And the Milky Way itself proved to be only one galaxy among countless others scattered across the observable cosmos. Each revelation stripped away another layer of cosmic privilege. Yet even within this vastness, one assumption remained, that the universe itself was the whole of reality. The multiverse challenges even this final sanctuary. If true, then our universe, with its galaxies, its stars, its physical laws, may be nothing more than one of innumerable realms, drifting unseen beyond our cosmic horizon. For many scientists, this was not simply unsettling, it was unbearable. Physics has long been anchored in the belief that nature is orderly and comprehensible, that the laws of the cosmos are universal and eternal. But a multiverse would fracture this unity. If each universe carries different physical constants, then the foundations of science may no longer be absolute, but contingent, fragile, perhaps even arbitrary. The Copernican humiliation is carried to its extreme. Not only is Earth not central, not only is humanity not unique, 
But the very cosmos we inhabit may not be singular. Our universe may be a province, not a kingdom. Skepticism was inevitable. To many physicists, the multiverse was not science at all, but metaphysics disguised in equations. How could one test the existence of universes forever beyond reach? How could such a hypothesis be falsified or measured or contained within an experiment? Without evidence, was it not only speculation? And yet the lure proved irresistible. The mathematics of inflation demanded it. Quantum mechanics whispered it. Even string theory, in its attempts to unify the fundamental forces, seemed to produce a vast landscape of possible universes. The multiverse was not an invention of poets, but a consequence of the very theories built to explain our own reality. This was the scientific shock, a collision between the discipline's deepest desire for certainty and the possibility that certainty itself might be an illusion. Reality, once imagined as singular and orderly, now trembled with the possibility of infinity. For some, the multiverse is an escape, a way to explain the improbable fine-tuning of our own cosmos. For others, it is a threat, a dissolution of science into endless possibility. Either way, the question cannot be unasked. If reality is infinite, then what does it mean to say, the universe? As the 20th century unfolded, science pushed deeper into the hidden layers of reality. And with every step, the mystery of the multiverse seemed to grow more haunting. At the smallest scales of existence, quantum mechanics revealed a world unlike anything known to classical physics. Here, particles did not travel along fixed paths, but drifted in clouds of probability. An electron might spin up or spin down, exist here or there, until the act of measurement forced one outcome into focus. Yet some physicists asked, what if both outcomes occurred, not in one world, but in many? In 1957, Hugh Everett proposed the boldest of answers, the many worlds interpretation. In his view, the universe did not collapse into one reality when quantum decisions occurred. Instead, it branched. Every possibility lived on, each in its own unfolding universe. A particle takes two paths. A cat is both alive and dead. An entire cosmos duplicates itself to contain every outcome. If Everett was right, then our universe is only one of countless strands, each diverging with every flicker of probability. This radical notion did not stand alone. At cosmic scales, inflationary theory introduced its own vision of plurality. In the early 1980s, physicist Alan Guth proposed that the Big Bang was driven by a brief but explosive expansion, space itself ballooning at unimaginable speed. The mathematics of this process suggested it might not end everywhere at once. Instead, inflation could continue eternally, spawning countless bubble universes, each sealed off by expanding space, each with its own physical laws. Within this framework, our Big Bang may not have been unique at all. It may have been one spark among infinite sparks, a single fire ignited in an endless storm. Together, these ideas deepened the mystery. Quantum mechanics suggested universes multiplying at every decision. Inflation suggested universes blooming across an eternal expanse. The cosmos no longer resembled a singular comprehensible whole, but a vast, layered ocean where reality itself seemed to proliferate without limit. For science, this was both exhilarating and unsettling. Each theory explained mysteries of its own. Quantum mechanics accounted for the strangeness of the microscopic, and inflation solved puzzles about the structure of the cosmos. And yet both led to the same haunting possibility, that our universe is not alone. What began as whispers in philosophy had now become consequences of our most successful scientific theories. The deeper humanity looked into the nature of reality, the more reality seemed to multiply. The mystery did not dissolve with knowledge. It grew darker, wider, and infinitely more strange. The night sky appears silent, but within its silence lingers an infinite echo. Every star, every galaxy, every faint shimmer of ancient light is framed by a question larger than itself. Is this the whole of reality? 
or only one fragment of an endless expanse. If the multiverse is real, then what we call the universe is not a final stage, but a single verse in a boundless poem. Each universe blooms like a flower, opening briefly, scattering its petals of stars and galaxies before fading. Around it, countless others emerge, each carrying its own laws, its own histories, its own possible lives. Ours is but one among them, fragile, fleeting, but no less real for being shared in infinity. For humanity, this vision is both humbling and luminous. It erases the dream of centrality, dissolves the illusion of uniqueness. Yet it also enlarges meaning, reminding us that our existence is woven into something far greater than we can grasp. If there are infinite versions of ourselves, infinite Earths, infinite skies, then the choices we make are not diminished. They are illuminated, each moment shining all the brighter against the eternal. The multiverse may never be proven, never glimpsed beyond theory's horizon. Perhaps it will remain forever hidden, a mystery that cannot be measured. But even as an idea, it transforms the way we look at existence. It teaches us that the universe is not small, not simple, not final. It is unfinished, unbounded, open to possibility. And in this endlessness, one truth remains. We are here, on this earth, in this universe, at this moment in time. We breathe, we wonder, we reach toward the stars. Whether or not infinite worlds surround us, this one is ours. Perhaps that is enough. For in the face of eternity, the question is no longer whether we matter, but how we choose to live within the fragile light of our own cosmos. Fade to black, the mystery unresolved and eternal.